Okay, let's talk about one of the most important skills there is in algebra, and that is factoring. Uh, and uh, when we talk about factoring, you have to know how to factor all sorts of things in algebra. And probably one of the most common things that students typically have a, a tough time with, not all students, but those students that are struggle a bit with factoring, they'll definitely struggle with factoring trinomials, something like this. So here we have x squared pl uh, plus x minus 12. This is a very easy problem to do, and I actually have the answer right here. Okay, x minus 3 times x plus 4. These are the factors of this quadratic trinomial. So um, I'm going to talk about... Uh, two ways. One way is the kind of the most common way to learn how to factor trinomials, these type of trinomials. And then I'm going to give you a little hack, a little um, kind of separate kind of way that is like a foolproof way of doing these problems every single time. So this is definitely going to help out those of you out there that are struggling with factoring. Now ask yourself, did you know, okay, if I gave you this problem, x squared plus x minus 12, and I asked you to factor it, could you come up with this answer? Of course, this is the answer. So if you want to think about that for a second, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section and say, yes, I know how to do this, or no, I'm you know, I'm not quite sure, or I'm maybe struggling a bit. Again, if you're having a tough time with factoring, it's quite normal, especially for, the, uh, for those of you that are just first learning algebra. But it is absolutely necessary that you master factoring. And of course, I'm going to give you a nice, lovely hack here in just one second. But first, uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school uh, math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you're struggling in math, please do me a favor. Do not quit. Do not give up. Okay. It's normal to, um, you know, struggle in mathematics when you're learning anything new and complex. Uh, but the, here's the deal. Okay. Uh, don't have self-doubt. Don't think that you can't do this because you absolutely can. But what you need is great math instruction, clear understandable and comprehensive. You need something more than a quick little tutorial, and that's where my math help program can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. You'll see the quality of my instruction is completely uh, comprehensive, step-by-step, -step, so anyone can learn this stuff. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, things like the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that you might want to check out. If you homeschool, uh, check out my middle and high school math program for homeschoolers. They've gotten top-notch awards and reviews through the years. By the way, uh, you should have great math notes. If you do not, you're doing yourself a real disservice. You can use um, my notes. Uh, I'm going to leave links to them in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing. Okay, so let's get into this uh, best factoring hack. And um, again, you know, I, I wanted you to, uh, before we get going here, I think it's worthwhile for you to stop and ask yourself, what do you currently know about factoring? Uh, did you know or could you figure out that this, okay, if I, you were asked to factor this, that you could get this answer? Again, this is a very easy, basic level uh, trinomial uh, problem, but uh, let's get into it right now. Okay, so this little hack that I'm talking about, we're going to kind of keep this discussion for in this particular video um, to what I call case one trinomials, okay? A case one trinomial, we're talking about quadratic trinomials, things with an x squared and x. It could be y, by the way. It could be y squared plus y minus 12. These are our equivalents, just a different variable. But we're talking about quadratic trinomials, okay? So it's highest power two, and then we have... Um, uh, our next lowest power, y to the first, and then like a number. So something like this, this is what we call a quadratic trinomial, very typical uh, polynomials uh, that you deal with in algebra. But what I'm talking about here is a case one where the uh, highest power, in this case it's x, right? x squared is one, okay? One x squared uh, plus x minus 12. Now this is in contrast to something like this, three x squared, minus 5x plus, uh, let's say, 9. Now, this may or may not be factorable. Okay, we, if we were asked to factor this, you're like, well, I'm not quite sure this is even factorable because sometimes uh, trinomials are what we call prime. You can't factor them. Okay, so you have to kind of go through a procedure to see if you can factor. But anyways, this um, particular quadratic trinomial has a number other than one, okay, i.e. three, it could be whatever number. As long as it's not one, this is what we call a case two. So 
Uh, this little hack here, uh, basically it works very similar with K uh, case two trinomial. I've done other videos on it, uh, on this as well, but we're going to keep this discussion just to be super clear here with case one. So these type of problems here, you're going to want to check out my other videos on factoring, or maybe just check up, uh, check out my, uh, full algebra one course, or, uh, yeah, that's probably what I would recommend pre-algebra. You start factoring algebra one, you really get into it heavy duty. So my algebra one, algebra two courses, I teach this thoroughly. All right. So anyways, uh, th that is a case two. you need to know how to do those, but this particular video, this hack, we're going to, uh, focus in only on case one. All right. So, uh, let's go ahead and continue on here. Now here again, here's our problem X squared plus X minus 12. And here are the answers. Okay. This, uh, quadratic uh, trinomial, all right, or polynomial can be factored into these two binomials. If you took these two binomials here, uh, x minus three times x plus four, and you use the FOIL method, all right, right, first out or in our last, you want this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this, you would end back up with this, all right? So you need to understand that. So this is um, the whole idea behind factoring. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what is a very common way to learn factoring. This is probably the way that you were taught uh, how to factor, okay? And it's a good procedure, uh, but uh, it's kind of classified as the guess and check method, okay? And this is where students get confused because you kind of have to guess and then you have to check and you kind of have to go through variation till you get the right combination, right? And uh, this typically can confuse students. So this is how the guess and check method works. So here we have x squared plus x minus 12 in a case one trinomial where we have just an x squared or y squared. We know our answer is going to have an x and an x. Okay, so that's the first thing that you're gonna do right here. This x squared, we're gonna put one x right here, okay, for that factor, and one x right there, okay? So basically, we're gonna have an answer. Uh, it's going to be two binomials if this thing is factorable, and it, an x is gonna be there, and an x is gonna be there, okay? What we don't know is this other stuff, right? What's gonna be over here? That's what we're, that's what we're trying to, you know, answer. Now, in this problem, we know the answer already is minus three and plus four, okay? So just kind of, uh, make believe you don't know the answer. And now let's go ahead and talk about this guess and check method, which is a good method. Okay. Uh, so here's the way it works. You take a look at this last number, negative 12. Okay. This is a negative 12, not just 12. It's, you got to count the sign negative 12. And you've got to think about factors of negative 12. So that could be one and uh, 12, negative one times 12. It could be a positive one times a negative 12. It could be a six times a negative two or a negative six times a positive two or a four times a negative three or a negative four times a positive three. So what we have to do in the guess and check method is just plug in uh, these factors in here, okay? And we have to... Uh, we're going to kind of take a guess. So let's let's start with this uh, uh, factors right here. Six and negative two. Six times negative two is negative twelve. So you would put like a plus six here. Okay, this is a positive six, and let's put a minus two here. All right. So now uh, that's the guess part. Okay, we're guessing with factors. Now let's check this. Now what does that mean? Well, uh, you could see here. Yeah, I have like I call this like a double uh, smiley face. Okay, so here's a smiley face kind of like a double smiley face like this. That's the way I kind of like to teach this. So you're gonna look at these terms. You're gonna, you're gonna do some multiplication. This six and this x, we have six x right there. And then we have an x times this negative two. That's a negative two x. Now, if I add these, okay, what do I get? I'm gonna get a positive six x plus a negative two x. You're gonna get a positive four x. Okay, so what does that mean, all right? Well, what you're trying to get is this. You're trying to get the middle uh, term, okay, which is a 1x. We're trying to get a 1x. So when we add these two double smiley faces up, we're trying to have the factor such that we get a 1x, 
So you're like, hmm, okay, well, is uh, positive 6x minus 2x a 1x? No, it's not. So guess what? This is, uh, you know, not the answer, obviously, right? So let's go ahead and try some other factors, okay? So let's go back, and let's take another guess here. Let's take 1 and negative 12. So this would be a positive 1. Let me use another color here. So positive 1 and a negative 12. And let's go ahead and do our little uh, check now. So 1 times x is a 1x, and x times this negative 12 is negative 12x. You can see when we add these together, this would be a negative 11x. It's far from a positive 1x. Well, uh, this didn't work, okay? So we continue on and on and on, and hopefully, okay, uh, you'll come to understand and be like, all right, uh, how about uh, this one here, uh, 4 and negative 3, all right? So let's try that one. Right, we'll plug that in here. We'll plug in a positive 4 and a minus 3 there. So, by the way, you can have a minus 3 here and positive 4. It's still the same answer. So it doesn't make order of the binomials doesn't make a difference. So 4x, positive 4 times x is 4x. X times this negative 3 is negative 3x. Ooh, it looks like we're getting someplace here. So 4x plus a negative 3x is a positive 1x. Yay, that worked. That is our middle term. So this is our answer right here, right? Uh, plus 4 and negative 3, which, of course, is right here. Okay? But how do we get there? Well, we have to guess and check through these factors of this number. All right. So again, a lot of students, what, what they'll end up doing is they'll, they'll get frustrated and, uh, you know, negative 12 only has a few factors to it. You know, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six variations of factors, if I counted that up right. But there's other numbers, other um, case two, especially trinomials, that have much more factors you have to kind of guess back and forth. So sometimes students forget to check, uh, to check a pair of factors when you get when you get good at this method you can kind of sense which factors are going to add up you're like okay i'm looking for factors where i can get a one so a lot of you are like oh yeah just use the four and the three because that's how, you know you can get a one and yes you should be thinking in those terms but a lot of students forget that and then they'll just get frustrated with this method so now let me go ahead and show you this hack if this is your situation if you're struggling with the guess and check method, okay, which is, you know, don't feel bad if you are. If you're successful with it, then stick with it, okay, but you should still know this little trick, this little hack. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. Again, here is our trinomial x squared plus x minus 12. We know that this is the answer. So how does this hack work? Well, the first thing is make sure your, your quadratic trinomial is in standard form. In other words, highest to lowest power, x squared plus x minus 12. We are talking again about case one, right? So one X squared, one Y squared situation. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take that one, you're gonna multiply by this negative 12, okay? So that, of course, is negative 12. Now, I want you to do this one times this, although this is just the answer um, right here, because this is gonna help us out when you uh, learn this hack for case two. Okay, so there's, this, there's a variation of this hack for case two trinomials. So I just want you to get it, that we have to actually multiply that leading coefficient times this number. Okay, so just go ahead and do that. One times negative 12 is negative 12. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to list the factors of negative 12. You're going to do this like a little like computer algorithm. Okay, you're going to just think to yourself, start always start with the number one. And there's always going to be pairs. Okay. Every factor that you're going to be dealing with is always going to be, um, uh, you're going to write it twice. So just go 1 times 12, 1 times 12, right? Whether this is a positive or negative version, so, and always start with 1, okay? Because 1 is always going to be a factor of a number. So 1 and 12, 1 and 12, then uh, we can have negative 1 times a positive 12 is negative 12, or positive 1 times a negative 12. So just alternate your negative here like this and this, okay? Now, after you're done with one as a factor, ask yourself, hmm, is two a factor of this number? Oh, it is. So just start increasing your factors over here. So yes, two can go into 12 six times. So write two and six, two and six, put a negative here and negative here, because negative two times positive six, negative 12, two times negative six, negative 12. And then ask yourself, uh, just kind of keep going up in, in values here. You'll get super good at this uh, as you practice this method, believe me. So yeah, oh yeah, 3 goes into 12, so that's 3 and 4, 3 and 4, negative and negative. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the sums of these factors. So in other words, negative 1 plus 12 is 11. 1 plus negative 12 is negative 11. Uh, negative 2 plus 6, positive 4. Negative, uh, I'm sorry, positive 2 plus negative 6, negative 4, okay? Now, uh, I'm going to tell you in advance right here, you don't have to do all this work when you uh, use this method to get better at it, okay? But here's the deal, right? What you're looking for, you're looking down this column right here, and you're looking for this right, uh, this middle term. What are we looking for? Just like we were looking for that other guess and check method, we're looking for a positive 1, a positive 1x. So you're looking for a positive 1 with these sums. So do you find a positive 1? Yes, we do. It's right here. Okay, negative 3 plus a positive 4 is positive 1. So these factors are the answer. Okay, so we can just simply write our two binomials. It's always going to be x and x. That part doesn't change. And then we just plop in a negative 3 right there and a positive 4 right there. And we are done. Okay. We didn't have to do any guessing or checking. You're just kind of like a little computer algorithm, right? You're just like, okay, negative 12. You're going to write all the factors out and you're going to look for the one. And here's the deal. When you're, when you're look, when you get better at this, right? And trust me, if you stick with this technique, this is a great technique to get good at. You're no, you're already knowing, okay, I have to find a positive one. So you can just quickly, you can kind of scan through here and look to see, oh, which number combinations are going to get you a 1? 1 and 12, a 1 and 12 will never get you a 1. 2 and 6 will never get you a 1. 3 and 4s will get you to a 1. This is a positive 1. This is a negative 1. So these are your answers, and you just plop them right in, okay? Believe me, this is a great um, little hack, little trick, especially for those of you that are, are um, struggling a bit with the guess and check method, but you still need to know the guess and check method. But just, you know, more importantly, you need to get these answers right. So maybe uh, try this hack, uh, get really good at it, and then circle back to the guess and check method. I think uh, if, if you learn this little um, uh, trick that I'm showing you, this little hack, it will actually make the guess and check better uh, for you. Okay, but again, you still need to know both techniques, but hopefully this is like an answer to your problems. Remember, factoring is critically important. You literally can't pass algebra without being excellent in factoring. Okay, and uh, when it comes to factoring, you're going to have to deal with factoring a ton of trinomials. So if you need more help with factoring, I would strongly uh, suggest my Algebra 1 course. You can find, um, uh, find it by going through my Math Help program. I also have additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel about factoring as well. But if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.